Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Our topic today is medical intuition with animals. With me is Miranda Alcott, who is an animal medical intuitive. She is also the author of a chapter in the book, The Healing Power of Water, edited by Masaru Emoto, and her chapter is titled, Listening to Water. Well, I think, Miranda, if you can listen to water, you can listen to animals. Yes, <laughs> that I can, and a lot of different things. It's, mm -hmm. The world is pretty alive for yeah. me. Yeah. And, and I know in the medical intuitive work, it involves a lot of visualization. A lot of visualization. The way I get my information is to actually see what's going on in an animal's body. Mm -hmm. um, and so, for instance, um, I get calls from veterinarians or referrals. Because you're not a, a medical professional. I am not. I am mm -hmm. not a veterinarian. No, no, I don't have medical training. And I feel very safe saying that mm -hmm. because I rely on the doctor. I work under the auspice of the veterinarian. So, um, no, I don't pretend to know any of that. All, yeah. I, all I do is share with what I'm being uh -huh. shown. But you're a gifted intuitive. We've done many interviews now yeah. about your work. And uh, I know it's, it's very heartfelt, and yet what you're telling me and what we'll explore in this interview is information that seems to come through that is of practical value. Yes. Yeah. It, um, it, it, and its all <clears throat> purpose is just to be supportive. If, mm -hmm. if anything that I am being shown will help what's going on, great. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really... But it's a work in progress because I've had to develop... Uh, ways to express it sometimes in graphics because the veterinarians always want to know, well, wait a second, what are you actually seeing? Yeah. You know, like, how does that work? When I first started doing it, I would pull up my laptop and the veterinarian has the client in their clinic with them in real time. Mm -hmm. So they're up in the Rockies or wherever they are in, in Oregon or in uh, Colorado, New Mexico, you know, Italy, and they will uh, say, here's a picture of the horse, and and can you please help us with what's going on mm -hmm. here? So um, you work with any animal? No, I'm, uh, yes. Oh, yeah, I do work with any animal, you but do, I'm not no, with the animal. There's no, you're at a distance. I'm at a distance. Thousands of miles, potentially. Yeah. And <laughs> you're tuning in to the body, the physical body of the animal, mm -hmm. and I, I imagine they're domesticated animals typically. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. They are for the most part. And yeah, for the most part they are. Um, and so uh, if they have had, if they've been struggling, if there's something that they don't understand and they're hoping there may be a piece of information I can give them that will fit in and make sense to them, which is what we're going for and what we're, we're mm -hmm. heading for. So the client is live with the, with the veterinarian in the clinic. And we start a treatment. Now, many times it'll be a cold laser. Um, it can be a hot laser too, but just laser or acupuncture, uh, manip physical manipulation. Uh -huh. um, and as they're starting that treatment, I'm looking into the body to see if the cells are responding. Uh, and when I see what I'm being shown, the, at first it's very gross. Yes, the cells are responding or we're not getting much of a response. What's wonderful about that is because it's real time, we can stop it right then and move to another setting, mm -hmm. as opposed to having to wait a few weeks to see if we get a result and what happens. So we're able to save time and, mm -hmm. and also focus in. And if they're working with a laser, you mean another setting on the instrument? That's right. Another setting on the instrument, mm -hmm. another needling if it's acupuncture, uh -huh. right? You know, if it's aquapuncture, you know, we have a lot of, yeah. a lot of modality. So you're actually able to look into the body, to even at a cellular level, to see what is the impact of this treatment. Right. 
And, I, and, and so, give them feedback in real time. In real time. And the, the great thing about the feedback in real time is that we really can keep focusing in, keep focusing in very quickly without having to wait long periods of time to see if something takes effect. You know, I have to imagine that would be very useful uh, in human uh, medicine. Well, and I'm not a human medical intuitive. <laughs> no, I you don't You have do your that. specialty. I do, I do. Mm -hmm. um, and the animals are so... Um, wonderfully open. At first they're a little hesitant um, only because they're wondering how I am working with them and I'm not in the room. But that happens anyway. That happens mm -hmm. with my work anyway. So yeah. you're not just looking into the body of the animal, you're also communicating with the animal. That's right. Because many times the animal will need some assurance or will ask you know, or will express something is something is really extreme, or you know, and we calm, we pull back, we lessen the frequency, we do change the frequency. I mean, um, and so we do. We can we can do that, and also many times the human who they're human, the, the animal's human is standing there most of the time, and the animal's human may have some concerns, or I notice this and I notice that, or the mm -hmm. veterinarian will give me feedback. Yeah. Oh. But now, are you also working as a healer? I, I don't consider myself that. I'm really just a tool. Mm -hmm. I'm just an implement. I'm just an, an, a glass. You're not trying to send healing energy. No, I don't do that. Okay. You know, um, I hold mine separate from. I'm very clear about my boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, the veterinarian does that. So. The intuitive word, I know you don't want to use the word diagnosis, but what, in effect you are like a diagnostic instrument of some sort. Well, no, because I think of a diagnostic instrument, one who says this is cancer, this is so-and-so. I don't do that. What I can do is say this is what I'm being shown. I see inflammation here. Mm -hmm. um, my my focus is drawn to this particular area of the body. Um, and, and that's a language I had to develop so that I could communicate it to the veterinarians as far as what, what was g going on. Um, so I had to use color. I use color a lot yeah. because people understand color. So if there's an issue in the body and it's a certain color, I know how serious it is or not, as far as is that where we're going to start working, or or we will start a setting, and that is not getting a response, so we leave that one and go to another setting, and then we see how it affects the whole body as we're working as well. Mm. Yeah, obviously it's not by parts. I see. would you say you've programmed your mind to uh, give you information uh, according to color and that's unique to you. Yes, in some ways, but I, I, when I first, I mean, in its purest state, there are so many things that happen that don't have color, that are not color related at all. We have so many more colors than what we see with our eyes. But when people ask me to describe, well, when you say there's a no color color, what does that mean? The closest I can come to this, Jeffrey, mm -hmm. is, you know, if you're driving down the road and it's hot and you're in the desert, yeah. you know how you see the heat rising? Right? Sure. Okay, there's no color to that, yeah. but you are aware that it's there. Mm. And that's how the non-color colors affect it. Well, it's because the heat creates a certain distortion. Right. And that so we're seeing at. the distortion. Yeah. I don't I don't see it as a distortion, mm -hmm. but that at least gives you some movement as far mm -hmm. as what the energetic yeah. is or the frequency that I'm Now I know we did a, an earlier interview in which we touched briefly on this subject and you mentioned a, a case you were working on a, a dog and you found white spots on the heart on the back of the heart mm. of that dog. Yeah. And then later on, uh, they actually did a necropsy uh -huh. and they found the white, white bumps on the back of that heart. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, that was the, that was really the first time that it was brought to my attention that I needed to work on this or develop it or do something. I'd, I'd never seen anything like that before where it pertained to the health of an animal in such a specific way. One of the, one of the um, skill sets I had to learn very young was if I'm shown something, then I'm meant to say it. 
If I don't, it actually physically hurts my body because I'm not completing and releasing the energy. Uh -huh. So when this came through with the dark, with the um, white spots on the back of the heart of this dog that was that had died, um, and was still in the clinic, I thought, why am I being shown this? But I have to say it to the human. And she then went to the clinic and said, you know, this woman said my my animal is transitioned, and the vet said, oh, pff, I was just in there, your animal's alive, and they went back and the animal had passed. And he said, well, what else did the animal? communicator say. She said, well, she said she has white bumps on the back of her heart. And he said, I'll do a necropsy for free if you'll let me. So they did, and they found white bumps on the mm -hmm. back of the heart. He said he said he couldn't even explain what the white yeah. bumps were. Yeah. Very impressive story. But let me ask you, because you, you've used this phrase, I've been shown. It yeah. implies that yeah. there's some other being uh, entity that is showing you. You know, I think of it as God, actually, mm -hmm. in the sense that um, if I haven't kept my agreement with staying healthy and exercising and eating well and keeping this, this instrument well-tuned, mm -hmm. then I don't grow. Yep. And if I don't keep working on the things inside of me that I need to heal, there isn't room to take in information or to see it. Mm. So when I say I'm being shown, that was exciting because it meant I was going to a deeper level. Okay. And and so the more focused and the due diligence I have, the more gifts I'm given. Okay. Well, it sounds like what you mean is what some people might call the higher self. Mm -hmm. Higher self, yes. Uh -huh. But also, um, I mean, I'm I I my body changes when that information comes okay. through. Okay. So, but it's not a possession. Thank it, you very much. It's not possession, <laughs> but no. it, it's visual. And when you say your body changes, it mm. sounds like it's visceral. It can be. Now, I'm again. I have a very definite boundary. I don't take in somebody's illness to see what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. I know there are people that do that. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I keep it at a distance, but I, yeah. but I am put on high alert, sometimes depending on the depth or the impact of whatever the situation is, mm -hmm. whether it's illness or whatever that we're dealing with. Um, yeah. Or if I'm meant to pay attention and take more information in. So for instance, I was, I was thinking driving here today um, that... Um, there are times when I'm shown things and I have no idea what it means. Mm -hmm. I can be driving and it occurs to me. And this recently happened with um, a beautiful collie where um, I picked up and sensed that um, a cancer in the body that we, the veterinarian had already diagnosed and had been working on. And we had been working with this animal for a year to keep it at bay with what we were doing. And it was working, it was really lovely. But I picked up a sense that it had ignited again. And I thought, you know, I just have to wait because I'm, I'm not sure that's really what I'm seeing. I know, yeah. you know, and it wasn't until two months later that, in fact, that was the timing that it had ignited. We mm -hmm. could trace it from x-rays that were taken. I see. So those are, those are, that's where the trust muscle comes well, in. And, but also, this is, you say you were driving your car. It's not as if you were in the... Um, mode of right. doing uh, medical intuitive work. It just right. happened spontaneously. Right, right. So I saw it when we were in the medical mode, but I didn't know what to make of what I was feeling and seeing. Uh -huh. And it wasn't until today when I was driving, I, oh my gosh, that's right. That's what that was. And that, oh, and that was a deeper awareness. So it's Miranda learning about Okay, I need to understand sooner. I got, I'm getting information sooner now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it also, uh, does that imply that you're not able to turn it on and off? Oh, no, I am. Uh -huh. But I do go into meditative states, especially when I'm driving across the desert. It's very <laughs> you have meditative. You be careful of that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you drove five hours to get here. I know, but <laughs> we're not in your Area 51, so I'm not that worried about getting into a meditative state. <laughs> Oh, okay. But w basically, this is an ability that's under your control. Yeah. 
absolutely. And I and I I'm excited about it. And the veterinarians, I'm so blessed. They're incredible mm -hmm. um, to be able to work underneath them and have them say, "Oh, but Miranda, you know, um, can you check so and so, or what about?" Or they'll just wait mm -hmm. for me to say on what I'm seeing. Yeah. And I'll say to them, I have no idea what that means. They go, it's okay, I got it. That's okay, I've got it. Mm -hmm. You know, and they know what herbs or they know what medications, they know what they want to do. And sure enough, we get really good results. Oh, so it's yeah. a team effort. Yeah, it is. Which I think is very important. A lot of people with intuitive abilities don't have a team. And uh, it makes such a difference. It does make a difference. It mm -hmm. makes a difference. And I get to learn, and the veterinarians love it when I describe what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. because the, I, I, and I will describe things that just anyone walking around, let alone a doctor, would go, oh, Miranda, please. You know, what are you talking about? One time, um, uh, way up in the Rockies, there was an animal they were using the laser on, and I was waiting to see if it took effect. And I said, they were holding the laser, and I said, are you moving the laser? Because I'm getting this, this impression, this, vi an this vision, that uh, vision is uh, graphic, of a, like corduroy. A mental image. A mental image of corduroy, of this undulating, and it's like corduroy. Are you moving the laser? And both the people on the other end, which was the veterinarian and the client, went, <gasps> I could hear them do that, and I thought, uh-oh. And they said, how did you know we were moving the laser? And they were moving it the entire length of the body. I had not picked it up in motion before. This mm -hmm. is going back a number of years. Yeah. But it was exciting to me, so I described it, and they said, corduroy, Miranda, really? Corduroy? And I said, well, that's what the patterning looked like. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when the cells respond. They give me patterns, and then I can see how extreme the pattern is, if it's a really great response or if it's a heavy response so we need to not do a full length of the laser so it starts out you you're getting a lot of information from the uh, veterinarian mm -hmm. he's explaining to you what he intends to do where he's going to do it no 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 they usually say to me where do we start and I will say, <clears throat> I give a basic setting on the on the laser that we just start with. Does the vet agree? The vet says, yeah. And they just turn on the laser. But what part of the animal? Well, that's up to them. Okay. So they tell you. No. They don't. They just say, starting. Okay. They don't tell you where. No. But you then visualize. Right. Well, then I, I ask for what am I, you know, I just say to the animal, I need to look in your body. Are you okay with that? And then I wait to see what lights up. And what do I need to draw my attention to? Is something green? Is something red? Is something blue? Do we mm -hmm. have arcs of energy? Do we have what looks like, as people would say, sacred geometry over a body? I mean, I've seen some amazing things when a treatment is, 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 amazing for the animal, you know, above and beyond, uh -huh. I will see these golden triangles and it's almost as though they're on fire and it resonates over points of the body of this animal. Mm -hmm. And that, that's very rare, but it's very exciting. Yeah. But we get feedback all the time about um, this, yes, the animal's responding really well. So sometimes what you're seeing is a geometrical pattern. It could be symbolic, I suppose. Well, I suppose so. I, I, uh, I just let those patterns happen. My first concern is the safety and the, and the care of the yeah. animal. Um, Sometimes so it's I very literal, like the spots on the heart. Yes. And a lot of times it's very literal. But sometimes But sometimes there are other forms that form above the body. So yeah. in other words, here's the body, I'm looking in the body. But then above the body, there, there can be motion that happens just from the electromagnetics. In, in other going. words, what uh, traditionally is called the aura. We, yes, except that I'm looking at that the machine is interacting with electricity. Yes. On, and, and infrared yeah. or what, and that creates a different element. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the machine, you're looking at the animal's body, you're getting at information the the from body, the energetics. Body. Right, we'll and the energetics and what's the created. Animal, and, right. and there seems to be a symbolic level as well. 
I, I stay away from that, Jeffrey. That's why I haven't answered you the first time. Yeah. Because I think symbology gets, I mean, you can use it as a language if you want to, if you want to create another language about it. Well, these golden triangles. Right. I don't necessarily know what they mean, except that when they show up, we see really great, I mean, it's an ex exaggerated In type other words, of, it, 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 they might not be a symbol. Most of the time. Yeah, exactly. They might be actual. An occurrence. Uh, something that is ontologically real at a, a different level. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why I shy away from the symbology, because to me, that's mentalizing something yeah. that is not, I, that's not my job. That's a great word, mentalizing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I still, I think of the mental level, you yeah. know, and we think of the emotional, spiritual, uh -huh. mental So your level. job is just to report whatever it is. That's right. That's my job is just to report what I'm seeing, and the veterinarian does with it. What and they and will. what you see can be at, at various levels. You don't even know when you begin what part of the animal's body you may see. Right, and sometimes the, sometimes they will. Uh, if we've been working on it more than once, then I'll say I'm picking up this in the liver, or I'm being shown, and they'll say yes, we've been working on the liver. Other times they will say to me in the beginning, um, we have been working with this animal for a year or for a month or for a week and we can't figure out what's going on, um, can you help us? Can you say anything? Mm. And then I'll start and I'll say, I'm pick this is what I'm picking up. And we start to then formulate a first laser setting or needling. And then I see if the body responds to that. Yeah. Um, in real time. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's quite complex. I guess it is. It's, it's, it's taken many years to get to where I am, yeah. but I, it's interesting. You look at it as a complex, and I think there's so much more to learn. Well, it sounds like, for example, you've studied enough animal anatomy that you can recognize a liver. Yes, and thank goodness for all the drawings and the graphics of them, and also I study pictures of photographs of mm -hmm. livers and that sort You'd of thing. You know the difference between the heart and the liver. Absolutely. Uh, and that's important. Not everybody would. Yeah. I don't right. know if I'd know a liver yeah. if I well, saw one. And, and, um, right, and then one of, the, one of the cases we shared about a cat mm -hmm. um, who was stray, and nobody knew where it had come from, but the cat was going downhill, and the veterinarian contacted me, had been treating the cat for a couple of days. They'd done x-rays. They'd done everything. They couldn't find anything that was wrong. So she asked me would I take a look. And when I did take a look in, and so all she emailed me was a picture of the cat. Mm. So I'm looking at my laptop, the picture of the cat, and what I'm seeing inside is in the jejunum, in areas of the um, uh, uh, digestive system and the stomach, and I'm looking at what I, and I it didn't make sense to me, yeah. but I was picking up things in three different places. So I marked on the graphic, this is mm -hmm. going back a number of years, on the graphic, and the veterinarian had her laptop open and she was screen sharing. Yeah. So she could see where I was marking. Mm -hmm. And she looked at it in the jejunum because that's surgery. And yeah. she said to me, just tell me, Miranda, are we going to have to do surgery? And that's not my decision. I said, but out of my mouth came, you're, you're going to be so successful at this. And so she went ahead and they did surgery. Now, she out of your mouth came, what does that mean? That means that I would not say that to a veterinarian normally. In other words, she was asking me, are we going to need to do surgery? I don't have that kind of information. Well, where did it come from? Well, higher guidance. Uh -huh. Higher guidance. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what, yeah, and I'm also Sagittarian, which is kind of funny about that because we always say a lot. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she, um, no, that was higher guidance. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so she went ahead. Um, she, it was her decision. She went ahead and she photographed everything as we went along and then pulled up the graphics and absolutely validated that is exactly yeah. where it was. Mm -hmm. And it turned about out to be organic which is why it would not photograph. Mm. I'm very intrigued by what you refer to as higher guidance because it, it does imply a lot of trust on your part. Mm -hmm. You could have inhibited that impulse mm -hmm. to say that. Mm -hmm. and, and as you say, it's not something you would normally no. say, but you didn't inhibit yourself. Yeah. And those are challenging times. Those are learning experiences. Mm -hmm. um, but I've learned when there is a stream that's a pure stream that comes through directly like that, that I should not mess with it. I mm -hmm. get off the road, stay out of the way, Miranda. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there, there are levels of learning in all of now, this. And I happen to um, imagine that that's the key to this whole art is trusting yourself. 
Well, not just, yeah, not just me. I mean, I I have to trust that what I'm given, and and um, and I've also learned too. If there's any feeling of uncertainty, I, that doesn't come out of my mouth. I don't say it. Uh -huh. I, yeah, that's okay. not appropriate. So when you told the veterinarian something you wouldn't normally say that you're going to be very successful when you do this surgery, you didn't have any doubts. No. Because I I didn't get me involved. Uh huh. I didn't get I didn't get my personality involved. Your ego. Yeah, my uh -huh. ego. So it was coming from another level, which much what, higher. Could be what we call the higher self, or it could be uh, a a form of uh, spiritual guidance. Well, yeah, absolutely. I don't consider it my higher self. I don't have that kind of okay. information. Do you consider that you have guides? Oh, I have teachers. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. I have teachers, but that's not that particular comment that we're talking about. Yeah. It did not come from that level. It was much higher. Higher than your teachers. Absolutely. I, I. So you're able to discriminate many different levels. Absolutely, it's a necessity. Uh huh. But it takes time to learn that, Jeffrey. Yeah. It does. The, it takes time. We, we could do a whole other interview <laughs> on this. We've got now your higher self, we've got the guides, and then we have another level even higher than the guides which, from which information sometimes comes. Yeah. And you're able to distinguish these and maybe others as well. Right. Well, you've been doing this work for decades, so yeah. I, and then I some. guess you have a very refined perception. Well, it, uh, it's interesting. Uh, in some areas, yes, but in most areas, I'm just always learning. Uh -huh. You know, it, it, all of this work is a work in progress. Mm -hmm. You know, this is pioneering what I'm doing, and um, and there. Uh, and also, it takes the trust of a veterinarian, but they trust themselves as well. Everything goes through them. Mm -hmm. So if something doesn't resonate, you know, they don't have any compunction of saying, you know what, I'm going to do so-and-so. Mm -hmm. That's up to them. That's great. I mean, they, the veterinarian might feel that, oh, Miranda's not having a good day today, and they just carry on. It, I haven't experienced that. What uh -huh. I've experienced um, is that they want to learn. They're excited by it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how interesting, and you are a pioneer indeed. This is breakthrough uh, work that you're doing. Someday it may be routine. I hope so, frankly. I hope I that hope this so. interview uh, led, uh, suggests to other people that they might also open up in some of the ways yeah, that yeah. you have. You know, it's interesting. My animal mentor, who Linda Tellington Jones, who has been this way for many years, she told me many years ago, Miranda, you need to document this because yeah. 30 years from now you're going to, but you know, that takes a grant because I, it's just me yeah. and my assistant. And I, so I put together PowerPoints mm -hmm. that document some of it. Well, yeah. Miranda, thank you so much for sharing all of this valuable material with me. Thank you so much for taking a chance and being willing to ask me. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Mm. And thank you for being with us. Thank you.